Hey everybody, and welcome back to another Gravity Ace devlog. I invited everyone to ask me what they'd like to hear about this week, and I got a lot of interesting suggestions. It was a great exercise because, you know, I've been working in this stuff for so long that I've kind of gone blind to things that would be interesting to other people. Uh, one of the most asked questions had to do with how I organize my project code and assets and some patterns I use for passing data around between nodes, you know, architecture and design stuff. So I thought I'd just give you all a quick tour of Gravity Ace, talk you through some of it. I won't have time for everything, but let's just see how far we get. Okay, so here's my project. I do most of my coding within Godot itself, but I like to use Visual Studio Code as my Git client. If you're not using source control, please start using source control. It will make your life easier. Uh, so I've got a few top level folders here for the project. Asset source has raw files for things like audio and music production, fonts, trailer videos. Uh, most of this is used to create supplementary material like this devlog and trailers, stuff that isn't actually in the game itself. Uh, some of it does end up in the game like uh, music but most of it doesn't. Next, I've got a build folder that contains my build scripts and the actual builds themselves. Uh, in this folder, I've got a post commit script that runs whenever I make a commit to source control. It takes the text from that commit and posts it to Discord for me. Uh, I've got a little Discord library here, and I've got a script called push that pushes builds to itch.io and Steam for me. I got the idea for posted commits to Discord from my buddy Max, uh, who's developing Flock of Dogs. Uh, you should definitely go check that out. The game folder holds the actual Godot project itself, and we'll talk about that more in a sec. Uh, platforms has assets I use for all the various storefronts and social media platforms where I have a present. You know, it's stuff like banners and icons, uh, screenshots, all of that stuff that you need to set up a store page. Uh, the press folder is where I'm putting contact information, uh, little blurbs I'm writing, pitches, summaries for reviewers, that sort of stuff. Uh, scrapbook is just a dumping ground for every screenshot, animated GIF, and video I produce. I'm in the habit of making a screenshot or recording a short video just about every time I test the game, and that all ends up here. So now let's switch over to Godot, and we'll take a peek at the game folder. Uh, there are lots of different ways to organize your files. What works for me is keeping everything together in one place. So, for example, if you look at the fuel station folder, you'll see I've got all of the files related to the fuel station right there. Uh, I've got the scene file itself, the GD script file, uh, another scene file for the GUI that appears on the heads up display when you're near a fuel station, and I've got all the different textures and sound effects. It's all self contained in this folder. This way, if I need to find a file related to the fuel station, I know exactly where to look. And I don't need to worry about file name collisions or trying to figure out which object some random PNG or WAV file belongs to. Um, let's see, so I've got, here's, here's a folder for fuel pods, here's one for the cargo boxes. Uh, all of my explosions are in the booms folder. And every object has a textures, uh, sound effects, and materials folder as needed. Then in the root folder, I've got some important scenes like the splash screen and the main gameplay scene. Now let's look at, at an actual script uh, and I'll show you some of the coding patterns I'm using. So this is an enemy turret. One thing I do is I use exported variables for certain things. Uh, I do this for two reasons. The traditional reason you do this is so that you can get access to the variables in the inspector. And they do show up over there and I use that for uh, certain objects like uh, the line trail uh, object that I have. But for this game, I mostly use it for the built-in editor. So when you're in the level editor, you can double click on any object and see a list of properties. All of those properties are these exported variables. Uh, GDScript has some neat introspection features where you can actually query a script file and see all of the methods and variables. There's a script in the editor uh, that looks for these variables and turns them into GUI controls. Uh, it, you know, I'm basically replicating the functionality of the Godot inspector itself. I use this same introspection feature when I save levels. So when I save a level, I 
enumerate each node in the level and I use introspection to get all of the exported variables and save their values. I also save the position and rotation of each node. The level save format itself uses Godot's built-in config file class uh, for serializing all of the data. I also use signals and callbacks for just about everything. Uh, I'm trying to use the engine in the way it was intended, and my gut feeling is that using signals and callbacks is going to give the best performance. Uh, so for example, if you want to test if something is near the player, one way you could do it is to use the process method and calculate the distance to the player each frame, and then do something when you're within range. That'll work fine, but that makes your code run every frame, and you're doing these calculations every frame. So a better way is you create an area 2D node with the collision mass set to the player. You add a circle collision shape with its radius set to the distance you want to detect out to. And then you use the on body entered callback. Uh, then you don't need any code in process at all. The engine does all the calculations and just lets your code know when the player is in range. Another pattern I use is based on the object oriented nature of the scene tree. Uh, every script is a class, and every node is like a self-contained object with its own methods and data. So if I have some functionality that I might want to use in several objects, I'll create it as a node, uh, save it as its own scene, and then I'll include that node in whatever scenes may need it. Uh, a good example of this are the icons that show up on objects that can be attached to the tractor beam. Uh, firstly, each beamable object is in the beamable group. I use that when I'm checking to see what can be beamed and each beamable object has a beam target scene. That scene is just an area 2D. Uh, it takes care of drawing itself. It plays its own animations. Uh, it uses the area 2D to detect when the player is in range. So I can just parent it to any uh, beamable object and I get these cool icons whenever the player is in range, uh, sort of automatically. Um, so I could go on and on, uh, but there's just too much to talk about. This video is getting a little long, but don't go yet. Uh, I've got a few quick announcements. First, we're having our second ambitious indie game night in beautiful Long Beach, California on February 17th. If you are in the area, please come. There will be a bunch of cool indie games there for you to play. And the beer at Ambitious Ales is fantastic. Uh, the first one was a blast. I met so many cool people there from a lot of different industries. You should definitely come. There's a link to the event in the description. Second, I'm also doing a beta test of Gravity Ace right now, uh, the weekend of February 1st. If you are interested in testing the game and you can provide some feedback, then please come join the Discord server and request a beta key. Go to gravityace.com for the link. That's it for now. As always, keep those questions coming and please help spread the word about Gravity Ace. Thanks for watching and see you next time.